Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm practicing a six month no buy where I abstain from buying anything I don't need in the categories of makeup, perfume, skincare, clothing, shoes, and accessories. During the pandemic, I found that I was resorting to over shopping as a form of entertainment and just sort of a coping mechanism for how difficult the last two years were. And now I'm looking to just revisit my relationship with everything that I've got and to make more conscious decisions going forward. So today I have a March empties video. I've got everything I used up completely in the month of March. And um, I also am gonna share some footage from a recent trip I took out west to see my mother. If that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so if you've also following my channel, you know I got a new camera, so I'm trying out some different backgrounds for a while. I'm here with my beautiful ripple leaf jade and some paintings from our ancestors. This is the painting, paintings behind me were done by um, done by my grandmother and by my husband's mother. So we had them framed in the same manner and have them on our wall here in our dining room, which is where I am. And I am, I've got everything I have used up in front of me and some of my notes so I don't go off too much and say too much. I also wanted to just show you real quick a couple of videos I took with my iPhone over the last week I was out west uh, visiting my mother and one of my favorite things to do when I am out west is to hike around. There's so much beautiful hiking available and you know where I live it's been cold and wintry and it's very flat. I'm in Michigan so I love getting out into the elevation and the sunshine and taking long hikes. So we did a bunch of that. I'll show some footage of where we were. We even made a day trip and went up to the National Park Bryce Canyon. It was my first time seeing that. We made it a day trip so, so our time there was very brief but I did did manage to capture a little bit of footage of what that particular national park looks like so I'm just back from that trip I had a really great time and I'm feeling refreshed and truly ready for the spring season and the summer season you know yesterday we had some hail and this morning I did see snowflakes in the air so I know that I've got to just be a little more patient but I am in my heart 100% ready for some better weather this is all actually relevant because I've been still in my winter skincare and like body care routine. The first thing I used up is a wintertime staple. It's Dr. Teal's Pink Himalayan Mineral Soak. In the wintertime, I like to take a ton of baths and usually one or two a week. So I like that Dr. Teal's is available at my target locally and it's really pretty affordable. I think I've tried every single variety they offer including a chamomile one which is really good. They have one with lavender and melatonin and one with eucalyptus and mint so I think I've, I've tried them all. I'll continue to buy them all. This one is kind of the basic one and if I want a scent I can drop some other essential oils into the tub with me. But I love this. It's a great product. I highly recommend. This next one I have had for years and I don't know if I would have used it up if I hadn't been on this no buy period because I kind of reached for it last but it's it's still pretty good. It's Glossier's Body Hero. This is a body oil, like it's a dry touch oil mist. So what it is meant to be a body oil that you put on after the shower that you missed. And I can't think of a worse idea actually than a misting body oil. So. I have found that this distribution method of this product is, has been its fatal flaw. In my bathroom, which is almost all tile, if I, if I miss this, I'm either slipping in my tub or I'm slipping on my tile floor. It's just kind of crazy. What you really want is something that comes out in your palm or you can control it and put it right into your skin. I don't really need a mist of oil covering everything I'm about to step on with my wet feet. It smells wonderful. It feels great, but it is kind of costly. And the, this bottle method is going to make it a no for me. I'm very unlikely to repurchase. Facial skin care. I also used up finally the Fresh, Fresh Rose Sleeping Hydration Mask. This is a mask from the company Fresh that comes in two halves. There's like a clear gel side and then a cream side. And you're supposed to put the gel side on first and then the cream side and then that's your sleeping mask. I liked this at first when I got it and I used it a lot. And then at some point I bought something else before using this up and I didn't return to it. It's one of the, like the things I'm trying to get better control on because this of course was a relatively expensive product. I'll, I'll put somewhere what it actually retails for. And this was simply expiring unused in my, in my medicine cabinet. So because of this, using up what I have, 
I finally got to it and I'm glad for that. It's an effective product. It is not my favorite sleeping mask and I don't think I'm going to repurchase, although it is lovely. Next, I used up a bottle of Clinique's Pep Start. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. This is a great sunscreen. It has SPF 50. It gives you a little bit of a glowy makeup-y finish, so especially on mature skin. If you're trying to use less foundation, I find that this, if your skin's in good shape and you don't need a ton of coverage, it can provide a little bit of glow that allows me sometimes to go without any makeup at all on light days. And I love that it's 50 SPF. It doesn't irritate my skin at all. I've adopted this as pretty much my favorite. I have a few more I need to work through now. I do expect to repurchase this again and again. It's at the moment my holy grail SPF product. Next is a product I've used a lot in my life and repurchased many times. This is the Rose Hydrating Eye Gel Cream. I've talked about this on my channel before. It's one of my favorite eye creams. I like it because it absorbs quickly. So if I want to use something in the morning to get some quick hydration to my skin, I can add it to my face not too long before I start doing my makeup and it seems to soak right in beautifully and doesn't seem to interfere with my makeup otherwise. So I do really like this one a lot. Will I repurchase? Maybe I have a lot of other eye creams that I've got to get through before I can repurchase. This will remain one of my favorite eye creams. In the category of nail care, I made my way through a Deborah Lippmann cuticle remover or softener. This is it comes out with a dropper and it's something that you drop on your cuticles before you prepare your nails for painting at home. Since the pandemic, I have stopped getting my nails done. I used to be a devotee of gel manicures every two weeks like clockwork. I was in the nail shop getting my gel polish switched out. During the pandemic, I did return to doing my own nails and I have some good polishes that I've purchased since then and I've found some good products that really work for me. I just love this and I absolutely will repurchase this when I'm done with my drugstore Sally Hansen cuticle remover which I don't love as much but which is totally effective and good and so I'm going to use that up before I return to the kind of the bougier formula that I do love more. This is a good product. This is a deluxe sample size of the, Le, I've heard La Neige, La Neige, and I've also heard La Neige. Um, it's a lip sleeping mask. I'm sure a lot of you have tried this. It comes in a much bigger tub, but I got this with my Sephora points perks. So I got this deluxe size. It is 0 0.08 ounces, 2.5 grams. It took me a really long time to go through this. I had it in my little nightstand and I used this most nights for a very, very long time. I could see how this particular product if you bought the full size would last forever. I'm not necessarily running to, to do that yet, but I did like this. I see why this product is so popular and I wouldn't be against buying it again, maybe even in one of these kind of deluxe sizes since I did find it lasted so long, I might like the option of a smaller size. I used up an Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the color medium brown. One of the things I've been trying to figure out since I went gray is what the right uh, eyebrow pencil color is for me and it's been a bit of a journey before when my hair was platinum blonde I did a little bit more of a warmer brown just to knit the colors together but my natural coloring is to have a dark medium ash brown and then the, the silver parts of my hair are really just white so I'm thinking that I'm having better luck matching the dark parts of my hair the this is medium brown neutral. I feel like this might be one of the most flattering ways to go versus buying the gray pencils and definitely not using the warm browns anymore. So I went through one of these. I will repurchase this, I think, um, but I still have a lot of other eye pencils and I'm able, I've got like a taupe and I've got some other colors that together I can make something work. Now I'm not gonna use something that's totally wrong for me. If I did buy something that is just a miss which I did because it was the pandemic and I couldn't go in and try makeup, so I just went ahead and bought some things to test. I do have some duds that I will be retiring in the future, but right now I'm gonna make it through the ones that really do work for me, but I'm going to earmark this particular pencil as being a pretty good match for me and pretty flattering. I absolutely plucked my brows off in the 90s. I, I'm struggling. It gives me great pains to see that that trend is like re returning. I just want to let all of the good people know that if you do pluck your eyebrows to a thin 90s arch, you're going to have the same struggle that those of us who did that then are having now, likely. I know it's not true for everybody, but a lot of us have experienced this. Enough with my public service address. Next is a product I've talked about on my channel before. This is the Caviar Anti-Aging Smoothing Anti-Frizz Dry Oil Mist. This is a deluxe sample that I had. I did talk about this at length in my video about hair oils, which I can put a card up here. This is a good product. I actually like that this one comes in a mist versus the body oil. There's something about the way this one mists 
that stays kind of controlled and it goes into your hair nicely. So I do like this one. It has a lot of silicones, which can be, they can, they can stay in your hair for a while, but there's nothing wrong with this product. I actually did kind of like it. I don't know that I'm going to repurchase, but again, I have liked having a small product in a spray format. If I could buy one of these again and just have this around when I need it, usually when I'm wearing my hair curly, um, I would. I just don't know if I'd want a full size of it. You know what I mean? You need these like little shooters in your collection for like the little special moments that are outside of your norm. And I've liked that for this. Recently I talked on my channel about, I uh, did a whole review on the Blonde Revival Purple Shampoo from Aveda. That is right here. This is a conditioner. This is the shampoo. The these are samples that I received from Aveda when I ordered directly from their website. So I did the video on the shampoo since I've reviewed a lot of purple shampoos. Later I tried the conditioner. They're both really great products. I think if you're looking for a purple shampoo line that's vegan, cruelty free, and sulfates free, this really is a great one to consider. Will I purchase after trying these? I might. I really might. I need to work through my purple shampoos I already have. Honestly, I think I might consider the conditioner before the shampoo because I do really like a surfactant rich shampoo that lathers up. I just do and the Blonde Revival doesn't, the shampoo doesn't, but I don't really need that in the conditioner so maybe that would be the way to go. It's a nice product. I also pounded through an Aveda, an Aveda hand relief. This is hand cream. I will not repurchase one of these. I've definitely had plenty of these Aveda hand creams in my life. I'm from Minnesota. Aveda was started in Minnesota. It's always been like an Aveda-centric sort of town. Definitely tried the uh, hand revival or the hand relief. I, um, I find the perfume too strong. I am, as you know, really into scents and perfumes, and I don't love having this scent competing with the other ones I've chosen for me. I could see if you don't wear any scent and you just want to smell like a spa, which is Aveda's, you know, it's like their essence is kind of a spa-like vegetal scent. If that's what you like and you don't wear any fragrance, this is lovely. But if you want to smell like something else, like Necco wafers from time to time, that particular scent can compete with it. I'm not saying that I don't like that scent. I'm just saying that it heavily competes with any other scent profile you might be going after, which a lot of times I am going after a different scent profile. This is Shiseido's Benefiance Wrinkle Smoothing Eye Cream. This is a deluxe sample. It came in one of those Sephora points perks where you can buy a whole bunch of deluxe samples. I finally got to this. I put this wrinkle, this cream, in my like, box of deluxe samples and there it sat for a really long time and I'm making my way through my stuff and I finally got to this. This is so nice. This is so nice. This is beautiful. I, I kind of have a little 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 space in my heart for this eye cream now love it very good it's a kind of a rich cream but it does soak in right away it feels wonderful i know eye cream people say eye cream is a bit of a scam and i think that could be true but i like having an additional layer of product that i put in usually i put my facial moisturizer everywhere including my eyes and then i put an eye cream on top of it and i maybe it's a redundant step maybe i'm getting scammed but I, I like using an eye cream and I'll continue to. This one's great. I love it. I really like the rose one I talked about earlier, but this one's a little bit heavier. Like I could see doing the rose gel cream in the morning, but this one before bed, I think that could be really nice. I am definitely considering this one. Will I repurchase? Once I make it through all of these other deluxe samples and everything else I have, I might. I really like this. I really like Shiseido's products. This brings us to expired. I have to throw away this bottle of OPI top coat. I really like the OPI top coat and for some reason I bought multiple bottles and I opened all of them and was using them all simultaneously in parallel paths, which is a terrible idea and I need to stop doing that. Um, this one just was like a little bit open too long and the other day I tried to use this one and it came out just like a stringy mess. It's way, it's been exposed to oxygen for too long. It's my fault and it's an example of how wasteful doing too many purchases of the same products can be. Sorry about that little buddy. This one's expired. Finally, retired. Part of what I'm doing too is making sure that the products that I've overbought or brought into the, the house during this time, if I don't like them, I'm going to let them go. I'm going to be retiring this Clinique Even Better Concealer. I bought it in the color CN18 Cream. This is slightly, a, it's a close match. It's um, CN might mean cool neutral. I, I might have made a mistake with that. I know because I have olive undertones, sometimes I try cool, but I really do have more of a yellow tint. It's confusing. 
and this color doesn't work for me. I also am not sure I love the formula. It dries to a pretty sturdy matte finish. I can see a lot of people liking this. It comes with this little, you know, sponge tip that you can use. I don't really like that either. I uh, try to practice pretty careful sanitation with my products, and so having a product like this as part of the packaging sometimes kind of gives me the willies. So I didn't use this much, and when I did, I always felt like it was the wrong color and I didn't like the finish. So this particular concealer I am retiring and I will not be repurchasing. If you've hung on here this long, thank you. You are a true friend. I wanted to quickly provide some check-in kind of thoughts about my no-buy period. I talked about this a couple of months ago that as I said it earlier in my video, the pandemic sort of triggered a response from me where I began doing more online shopping than I ever had and I found myself getting kind of dependent on online shopping for hits of dopamine and just a general sense of entertainment. And so what I've wanted to do is practice the six months of no buying to see what my mind does instead when I cut off that particular pathway. So far it's been going pretty well. I do still find that I enjoy shopping. One of the things that led me to shopping is that I really do love beauty and beautiful things. I was raised by an art teacher. I myself went to college as a creative writing major, have these sort of sensibilities and I'm drawn to beautiful things. I'm drawn to art. It's one of the reasons I'm drawn to perfume. It's like a sort of different sensory form of poetry. I have that sensitivity and when you love these types of things and they're advertised to you in a very compelling way and they make it very easy for you to buy, meaning online shopping is easier than it's ever been before, it was easy for me to use shopping to make myself feel better during the pandemic, which was a very stressful time. And what I don't want to do is thoughtlessly consume. I'm also very aware of the fact that the earth is under significant stress and if we don't do something about that soon. I really do believe it will severely impact our lives and the lives of the generations to follow. Whatever I can do to help avoid it, I'm trying to be more focused on being part of the solution. So curbing my tendency to want to shop. It's part of my dawning awareness in a lot of ways that goes hand in glove with my gray hair transition. There was something about throwing off the obligation to appear a certain way in order to be valid in our society that also led me in some ways to question all of the ways in which we seek validation. I have a lot to say about it, but I I've, I've been thinking a lot about it. And at some point in the future when I'm ready to talk about it, I do want to talk about how that how this and the gray hair transition have been impacting the way I see myself as fitting into our society because it's been profound. And I, I felt like this no buy period was a little bit of like a, a cleanse, an energetic cleanse to be able to be a little more in control of my relationship with the, the world of commerce. So I had a little interruption to that when I was on vacation. We were in an area that is known for um, consumption and indulgence. We had a lovely time. I love being out west. I love being in the desert landscapes and being with nature in that way. I get so much from it. It lifts my spirit so much that when I returned home after this trip, you know, I had that post-vacation glow. I came home to my Sephora postcard in the mail advertising the sale that was on and I knew that I wanted to buy something at the sale specifically for my husband. I've upgraded his face wash to one of the fresh soy cleanser face washes and he loves it and we usually wait until the 20% off sale to buy a large amount of it just to be frugal and so I knew I was going to be doing that for him. It's outside of my no buy prohibition that's totally a sanctioned purchase but I went in there and I, I had this moment where like I haven't missed a Sephora sale in a long time and I found myself putting things in my cart that I was trying to justify that I needed like the Deborah Lippman cuticle remover I thought oh I'll just buy one because I'm getting low on the Sally Hansen one and I, I loaded up my cart with some of these items and then I stopped and I went into my nail kind of kit and I have half a bottle of that Sally Hansen cuticle remover I that's not these are not the rules I need to finish that first and it'll take me a while to finish it so I had to go back into my cart and remove everything that wasn't my husband's face wash. <laughs> I can't say exactly how the, the dual factors of you know feeling rested and good after a vacation married up with the Sephora annual savings event, but together I found myself very close to slipping and moving into an unconscious shopping behavior. 
It's good that I'm on this just because I've gotten through two months pretty easily doesn't mean that I've completely doesn't mean that I've completely changed my ways. So I wanted to check in with you on that because it's been okay, but I can also see how this is a challenge and I can see how an entire year could really rewire your mind. So if you've been thinking about doing some kind of no buy practice, I am finding some nuggets of gold and wisdom within this time period. Two months down, four months to go, I'll keep checking in with you. Anyway, I hope this video finds you well, and I hope you all have a really great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.